everyone, it's Raja. And Raven. It's a very, very special episode of RuPaul's Drag Race Fashion Photo Review. Featuring the House of Barefoot 2020. With us, we have Eureka O'Hara and also Manila Luzon. Yes, yeah. Oh my goodness. Hi, bitches. Oh, I miss you guys all so much. Look at how beautiful you look. It must be pride season and everyone dressed accordingly. The real tea is, is that aren't we all barefoot? I'm actually barefoot right now. And one of the things that I bought, a robotic foot massager. Oh, I have two. You have two? Yeah, one per foot? One, one, yeah, pretty one much. Per foot. Yeah. The, the, my, my feet are so big, I had to buy two separate ones. <laughs> right now, my toenails are actually growing into curls, and they're about... <laughs> oh my gosh, Eureka. I know, what is going on? This headpiece is everything, Eureka. <laughs> I'm actually just excited about this look. I did kind of get a little She-Wear inspired. This label actually represents the Trailblazers and I just wanted it to be kind of warrior-esque. And you know, I just love like as elevated of drag as possible. I like to be the most. It's the most. My pattern was uh, marriage equality. So I wanted to have like a very like romantic kimono. Like I was on my honeymoon just. So this is like something I would throw on just to like pick up room service. Mine is the spirit of pride. Yes, ah. well, you look gorgeous. The fabric that I'm wearing is one that represents the AIDS uh, epidemic. So I'm really trying to give it a feeling of radiating and light. And also, you know what? I, I really kind of want to harken back to the idea of, you know, 1969 and 1970. And so I kind of wanted that boho hippie feeling to it. I love this. It's so good. And light, and it also covers my gut, so. <laughs> I love the detail work in all of your looks, ladies. The House of Barefoot 2020. Well, it's too bad we can't spend pride together, but you know what? We did it virtually. Yes, we are going to be tooting and booting looks from pride past and present. I think that whenever we are doing a pride show, we kind of know to dress for the heat, right? Like whatever is going to be the coolest, especially because you're going it to, it's, sometimes it's an all day event. Usually it's rained the night before. Oh, so it's so humid. You're performing on like a grassy field. So your heels are like digging into the grass. Here, get ready in this easy up right behind the stage. And you like go out on stage and you're drenched. Are we going to get to see Raja's very first pride? Um, what was that? With like? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> 2020 BC. <laughs> Honey, nobody knew about the 13th disciple but here she is <laughs> first person to the stage we bring is me this is your oh. life oh where was that at girl how young are you in this this wasn't that long ago this was about like about four years ago yeah, I was wearing a wig during the time when I was growing my gray hair out. So I, I don't know exactly where it was at. I just remember the outfit and I remember wanting to be very, very comfortable because it was hot outside. But <laughs> you look, you look like someone in this. I cannot put my finger on it, but you look like somebody. I would say Nicole Scherzinger or no, just. I would say no. <laughs> um, let's see your armpit now. What does your armpit look like now? <laughs> that to us. No, I don't want to see that. <laughs> did you create these boots because they look like something that you would have made? I did. I was kind of like at the moment I was going for something that was very kind of hippie or 1960s themed because I felt uh, that there was a revolution coming and I needed to start dressing the part and um, freedom of the 1960s theme. I love it. I love I love this look. It, it, it's giving me it's exactly cute. what you I give it a two. What you're telling. Yeah. Definitely a toot for me. I'm dancing. I was doing. I love little, that color. I was doing a little shimmy. I just it was a gold kind of uh, pleated thing made out of a bunch of those like goddess capes, and they're very very convenient when you have to be at an event like this because not only are they cool and breezy, but you just tie it on and then it's dynamic. You have a way of like making fashion out of just something that I would never think to create, so to like tie it around your body. You know what? I will I will wear a trash bag and smear my face with poop and still own it. So I know that's why. 
I hate about you, bitch. You really would. We'd be like two. <laughs> I like it because you know it looks comfortable because she has a loose tuck. It's really flowy, so she doesn't have to worry about what. It's nice and airy. It's used in a unique way. I love it. It's a toot for me. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. You look like you're living, you. bitch. You look like you're living. All right, next we bring to the stage my sis, Manila Luzon. <laughs> oh, bitch. Oh, I love a pride at a pool party, honey. Girl! This was pride in Vancouver. Um, this was like my first out of the country gig after RuPaul's Drag Race. I went all the way to the exotic, far away country of Canada. Wow. Um, and I was doing this, I was doing this party in Vancouver and it was a lot of fun. I had gone downtown to the, the fabric district and I had bought like this sparkly fabric and I didn't know what to do with it, but I knew it was like sparkly and colorful. So I made a basically, it's like a, a sack dress. And then I, I found like tutus at the ballet, the ballet supply store where I buy my tights and I just safety pinned the on girl. It was a very comfortable, a bang wig girl. You know, you know it is. Oh, I love it. There is not one bit of purple glue in your brows right now. You're outdoors. You don't want, you don't want to be tucked, and you certainly don't want to be glued. She's got a high I'm, skirt, I'm, all the legs out, all the bodies up top. She's like, I'm gonna be comfortable. I'm gonna be ready to party. <laughs> She's ready to roll in that pool. That's what she's- I doing. know that's right. How many lashes do you have on this thing? Stacked lash, mama. She is stacked, bitch. Well, here's the, the thing, and I learned this from Lady Bunny, is like wear like a 60s poncho-y, billowy thing, but show off the legs. Because on prides, I usually, because we're gonna be outside, I usually shave my legs, and I usually keep them hairy and I wear tights. In order to mask the fact that I don't have hip pads on, I, I do more something more voluminous and loose. That way it's cool, and I still get to show off leg more free to like celebrate with everyone. And it makes you want to be there. Yes. <laughs> you got all that on, you're like, get me out of this. It's crazy how like as old as as I'm getting older, how many things I'm adopting from the philosophies of Lady Bunny's drag. <laughs> I get it. I get it now. I get yeah. the thick bang. I get the trapeze size like tent dress and the legs showing. Cause that's all that's left. All that's left is about this much face and that much leg. Are you guys tooting or booting my look? What? What's the deal? What's the tea? Two. Oh, I toot it all the way. I toot it. I believe in it. I love that the shoes match the dress. It's a really cute length. Uh, uh, the legs look really long. I'm tooting it for sure. Thanks, Eureka. It's a toot for me because I've seen all the other things you've ever worn. Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> that misty. Oh, oh speaking of. yes. <laughs> Come on now. Oh, I love that look so much. Yeah, nothing makes me happier than a nice campy look, honestly, and I love that about your drag, Manila, to be honest, you always say it serve this like element of camp and fashion at the elevated nude shoe with this. It gives a good color combo. I'm here to toot it. I'm gonna give it a two. Thanks, girl. I give it a chocolatey whipped cream <laughs> filled toot. Yes. Slurp the cream out too. Next we bring to the stage, <laughs> Raven. Oh, <gasps> bitch, that's too much for them. You gave them too much. And that was Richmond, Virginia, 2011. I'll never forget. I've been to Richmond, Virginia, and I believe I recognize that stage. The same, I was getting ready to literally say, is that Richmond, Virginia? That's so wild. It's Isn't it kind of like right by the river? Have you ever seen Raven from Drag Race? That's what you look like. <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> I love it with you. You love a little like cape moment around the neck hoodie with this like flat. Well, you know what that is? Hair. That's the that's wow. actually the bottom half of the blouse that I'm wearing. I cut it off because it was so <laughs> hot. Shut and up. I <laughs> took it and wrapped it around my head, stuck a headband on and said, let's go. And called it fashion. That's my girl. It's sexy and mysterious. And I actually really love that it's giving me like that Bond girl vibe. I also like the accents of like kind of Egyptian styling with the bracelets and the headband with like the swagged uh, hoodie and stuff. And the body is right, mama. I'm tooting it for sure. I'm, ge I'm getting that body back, bitch. It's a toot for me. Thank you. Oh, oh, this is vintage. This is like 2000, look at the lips. You can tell how old it is. <laughs> Mary, I love this. That is 2005 or six. 
That's mahogany lip pencil with vino lip pencil <laughs> and bubbles in the center, bitch. That's yeah. what I did. I know that's what that is, mama. She's all 90s drag. Was this photographed on one of those click and wind uh, disposable cameras? <laughs> it probably was. It had to be scanned and uploaded, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we all have those pictures where we're standing in front of liquor locker in the like freezer like okay get a quick picture and let's go oh, and i remember gluing those rhinestones on because everything started so late so i had rhinestones and i'm like i'm just gonna start gluing these rhinestones on my chest why not i love it this looks like you're like you're part of someone's like top eight of best friends on a myspace oh, that's God. that's what this <laughs> Oh my gosh. There, it's a toot, was... it's a toot. Thanks, bitch. I, you know what, I'm gonna give it a toot too. Why not? I give it a toot as well. I think it's wonderful. Bitch, I say toot all day long, mama, cause you look lovely then and lovely now. I hope we don't get none of my own pictures, bitch, cause my own pictures y'all gonna be like, ooh. Well, you're next, bitch. Oh! Oh! oh. <laughs> This was me uh, circa uh, Miss Blue Ridge Pride was the name of the pageant. And I just thought I was the only pageant queen in the universe. Bitch, I put on all the jewelry, all the makeups. That's what I wore way too much contour. I love this image so much. What year was this? I think this might be like 2009, 2010 probably. I love that necklace. Oh, so that's the same dress. Yeah, it's it was a little ball gown moment that I made. And is that the same night? Uh, this was two different prides, actually. This one's at a pride in Charlotte, North Carolina, I think, and the other photo was a like promo for my step down, you know? You look so beautiful, babe. You look so angelic. Like we were saying before, it looks comfortable because the bustier like keeps the girls up, right? So you have all this skin showing, so you keep cool. All of your hair is up away from your neck, and then you just have this like big billowy dramatic uh, skirt, which is like rainbow, and it, it's, it's really, really pretty. And then the top is yellow, which Muff, so. Well, you know, underneath that, under that dress bottom, bitch, I'm literally wearing basketball shorts and tennis shoes, bitch. So I'm like, no, I'm barefoot right now, mama. I'm, I'm balls to the wall, commando fish. Did someone say barefoot? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, ma'am. You're redoing the pages, Miss Thane. The first thing that I go to, because anytime queens throw a bunch of stones on something, it's so off putting when they're a different color than the fabric they're on. The orange stones match the orange fabric. The yellow, the green, the blue. Um, thanks for that, bitch. <laughs> You're welcome, bitch. This was me competing at Entertainer of the Year uh, for creative evening wear. I had like a big pride flag backdrop. I came out from behind. I thought I was the only, like the only one. And girl, I'm just surprised at like what three hairs this updo was hanging on to as I bent backwards in this dress, bitch. That's what I'm thinking as well. I'm like. That do those updos with those loafs that put pin them on to that much hair and then spray paint <laughs> head and think that oh bitch i am serving it and then Derby. you will still walk your ass out to the middle of the day on and pride float and by the end that dripping down your face so thanks for not doing that here it is a toot for me girl it's a toot Thank Dude. you, thank you, thank Dude. you. I think that outfit is fine. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I think you look so beautiful. I, Eureka, you look so stunning in it, and you can see your evolution. And she's a space woman now. <laughs> space um, warrior woman. But I give that look an absolute toot. So. Oh, uh, thanks. Now that we've tooted and booted the looks from the House of Barefoot past and present, let's take a stroll down memory lane and reflect on pride through the years. So this is 1971, the, very, the second annual march on Christopher Street, which then turned into what we know now as pride, but pretty much started out a tiny, tiny parade. Oh, you can see that it is still kind of in that raw form. The pride flag hadn't been invented yet and the rainbow wasn't even a part of the conversation yet. Here, this is Kate Millett. She was actually at the same march that we just saw in 1971. So Kate Millett also was the writer of a beautiful book called Sexual Politics, which actually, uh, you know, fought against the morals of where women were in the household and also the sexual dynamics and liberations of women um, and the root of it. Um, I took Kate's glasses. I need those glasses. Ooh, I love Love them, bitch. Next, we bring Vito Russo. And the look how cute Vito Russo is. 
This year, I believe this is 1975, so I would have been a year old. Vita Russo is a very special queer fellow and gay icon who wrote The Celluloid Closet, which later became a documentary film that discusses gay people and the gay and queer presence in films. When I was growing up as a young queer, it was a very important film for me to watch because it really kind of exposed how present we were through history as queer people in film. And he also created Glad. Oh. Yeah, he's the founder, the founder of Glad. That's incredible. Yes. Oh my God. This is Leo Matlovich. He is the first person to publicly out himself in the military. Wow. Wow. Yeah, it's it's always something to be said when you do it at a time when you have a lot to lose. He said, no, uh, you're gonna listen to me. And he created a movement. But I remember as a young queer gay person that the silence equals death graphic was so profoundly imprinted into my mind. It wasn't about rainbow. It wasn't about just pride itself. It was about saving lives and taking the government into accountability for what was happening at that time when people were dropping dead. Could you imagine being in a club one day and seeing all of your friends and you're kicking with your friends and a week later the club looked different where half of the club was gone. The silence equals death symbol, that graphic is iconic. 100%. Right? Our fight is not finished. Okay, work, mama. I'm so excited here we actually have one of the members of STAR, which was the Street Transvestite Action Revolutionaries, one of the most incredible trailblazing teams at the time. Even though it's in black and white and the rainbow flag hasn't really been a thing yet, there was so much color in this photo. Oh, honey, and she said, I'm gonna be me and I don't care. Look at her, she looks beautiful. So we here we have a photo of the Imperial Court of Orange County recently. <laughs> <laughs> this is 1977. It is gay pride. The drag queens are out. They yes. brought a bed sheet, spray painted gay pride. <laughs> but they're wearing their finest drag jewels. I live. I love this. So this was the 25th anniversary of the Stonewall Uprisings, 1994. Mm -hmm. Wow. And here we have the flag. The flag has become symbolic with gay pride. It has become the promise of a new tomorrow, the promise of new beginnings. What's cool too about this image is that that pride flag actually went and continued down the boulevard. It isn't just one small segment, it is one giant, long, like multi-block long representation of the rainbow flag. This is 1995 and their outfits look like 1995. I love it. I know. <laughs> and I know that in 1995, doing something like this, even a gesture of putting your hand around your lovers, your spouses, your, you know, your favorite person was a statement. Holding someone's yeah. hand was still a statement. It still is today in so many areas. It's, it's, you know? It is a yeah. protest. This is 2015 in New York City, right outside the Stonewall, where in 1969, where they threw the first brick and started the whole Pride movement. This is a photo on the day that the Supreme Court in the US uh, legalized gay marriage. Marriage equality for all. And this is a drag performer, Carlotta Girl, marrying the man she wants to spend the rest of her life with. I've been in the Stonewall. I've hung out there many times. And Every time I go into the stone wall, I always feel that sense of power and nostalgia and realizing that this is where the movement, where it actually began. Yo, we have Sarah and Parker from Free Mom Hugs with us. They are at all the prides and this year is no exception. So welcome. I want a free mom hug. Hello. Hi, Sarah. I'm going in closer. Oh, I could feel that hug. I want a hug from Parker because Parker's really cute too. Yes, Come uh, yes, yes, yeah. yes. Oh, yes. I, I'm feeling Parker's hugs, hugs. Bear hugs. <laughs> My son Parker is part of the community and he took us on a journey from the church to the Pride Parade. Yeah, in 2014, my husband and I stood with Parker at the Oklahoma City Pride Festival. And now we have uh, chapters in every state. Uh, if you go to the website, you can find your state, your chapter and get plugged in there. The mission of Free Mom Hugs is to empower the world to celebrate the LGBTQIA plus community through visibility, education, and conversation. I miss physical contact with other human beings and this pride, I feel like we all need a mom hug right now. I, I will 
actually pay, I will pay for a mom hug. So you're giving them out for free. Yes, we do give free mom hugs and high fives because not everybody is a hugger. There's a need right now for touch and how important a hug from anyone, especially from a free one from someone's uh, lovely mom like Sarah would be right now. I, I actually got to learn about free mom hugs through the show we're here that I'm doing where I was actually working with one of the organizations there in Gettysburg and it was so special and I connected with it so much because I lost my mom about a year ago and um, it was something that I needed more than I even realized was like just the hugs and the embrace. It's such an important message, honestly. And I actually remember Amy, one of the volunteers that was at that meeting I'm talking about in Gettysburg, she told me, you know, they were just walking through the Pride Parade and these kids walked up and they were just like, are you serious? After looking at their shirt. And she said, yeah, to them. And they fell into her arms and just started to weep, you know? And I think we forget how special it is because a lot of us in the LGBTQ community don't necessarily have connections with our families like some do. And it's really special what you're doing and what you're offering to people because um, you know we all want to have that sense of belonging and family is so important and we have chosen family luckily and you all are taking chosen family and elevating it to a mom level that's really special so thank you Parker I have a question what's it feel like to share your mom with so many people I joke and say that she has more gay friends than I do um, but uh, <laughs> it's kind of truer by the day I always ask Raven the same question so <laughs> she hasn't set me up with anyone yet, so she's not using her power to her greatest He's ability. Single. He's single. You're but single. <laughs> mom, yeah, get it, mom. Know. That's been a really, really beautiful, cool thing is to be like, well, this was my mom, and this was my aunt, and this is my whatever before, you know, my mom was able to be. And that's a really, really cool thing for me to see is just them kind of meeting the family that helped raise us too. To see other parents being able to accept their children and love them regardless of who they are is really inspirational. And I think that now that my parents have come around, they really, really enjoy kind of being that spokesperson to new parents who are uh, dealing with their LGBT children. I'm just doing things that I wish someone would have done when I was trying to figure this out. Free mom hugs offers a platform because people want to do something, but it's made the world a difference in, in my life, in the lives of families like ours. And you guys have really, really cute t-shirts. Like, oh, it's that's just, true. It's just like a big I'm, advertisement to your like, like warm bosom. Yeah. Just like coming. Yeah, you gotta see the back. <laughs> see the back. Oh, I'm proud of you. Oh, that's so Aww. sweet. And how do people sign up to be part of Free Mom Hugs? You just go to our website, freemomhugs.org, and you can find your chapter in your state. We also have merchandise our logo is recognized worldwide sarah the proceeds of that merchandise that's going back into the organization to these chapters correct yes we have chapters in every state where they can raise their own money a lot of people want to have fundraisers to help them with their merchandise or whatever they're doing you took this upon yourself to just go ahead and show up to pride without anyone asking you to and just offered yourself. It wasn't you going in and charging $5 a hug. You do this out of the kindness and warmth of your heart, so thank you. Well, you're welcome, and I, I do it because I'm accountable to what I know now. Thank you, that's really powerful. I wanna say that I love the design of these and I love even more the stories behind each logo. Well, Barefoot Wine is gonna donate $1 of the proceeds from every case sold a Barefoot Bubbly. Hey. All right, so Free Mom Hugs is gonna get a big old paycheck tonight. Well, thank you for your contribution. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On behalf of the House of Barefoot 2020, we love you, we support you, we stand with you, and we appreciate the work you're doing for Pride. Absolutely. Cheers. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Hashtag March onward. Happy Thank Pride. You. I Happy know. Pride. Happy Pride.